We screen about 25 to 30 patients in a day on our screening days. So I remember, I mean, was, he came into his screening day, he like, you know, he had a tumor and he, honestly, we see a fair few of these tumors. Really, Dauda started to kind of imprint himself on my memory because of his story, because of hearing his dad tell the story of, you know, the tumor itself and, and also what he had to go through to get, to get care. The malady de mon enfant. C'est longtemps, pendant 10 ans, c'est plus que 10 ans, ça commence. Mais lui, là, il a fait presque 5 ans, il ne sort même pas dans la maison, il était dans la maison. His father talked about, you know, as the tumor grew, Dauda became more and more reticent, more and more shy, because people stopped kind of addressing him, stopped looking at him, started looking at his tumor. Mais je fais tout possible de lui soigner, je n'arrive pas. Je fais partout. They live in a town in Senegal, on the border between Senegal and Mali. So about as far away as you can get from Dakar, the capital of Senegal, something like five, six hundred kilometers away. Uh, he went to hospitals, health posts near him. They couldn't take care of this. He said, there is nobody on the road between Mali and Dakar that doesn't know my son. As part of this eight-year process to get care for his son, he spent the equivalent of about $10,000. If you take the average salary in Senegal, that would be just about six years of salary. Sans l'hôpital, même là, j'ai dépensé l'argent de quoi? Yeah, I did talk a lot with his dad, and he told me how much it was hard for him to bring Dauda on the IFM because every people in the village said to him, like, you should not uh, bring your kid over there, you don't know this. Um, organization like you can't trust them and he never lose face like I remember he said no I, I have to bring my my kid to this ship his tumor started just like any tumor would here. His was a benign tumor, which is why it could grow unchecked for eight years. As these things grow, yes, they aren't cancerous in that way, but they start to interfere with how you eat, how you speak, how you look. If you or I, got that small lump and noticed it in our face, we would be in the doctor's office the next week. We would take care of this. And the fact of the matter is, that's exactly what Dada's dad wanted to do also. He wanted to take care of it too. It's just that we have access in a way that he doesn't to that care. tumor is removed, they realize, oh, this thing that I've had for eight years, 20 years, 30 years, is gone, right? And there is a, there is a transformation, especially in the kids, and the way that they start to interact with the rest of the world. Are you ready? So we cut out his hair in the OR because we were going to initially bring a muscle down as a flap so that we could fill the bone that we, um, that we took out. But because the surgery went so well, we didn't need to. So now we just need to shave all of his head off to make him look like the perfect guy that he is. I telephoned to the village. I said that the little one was a girl. I said that it's true. Even if it's returned, when I see it, it makes me return. It makes me feel better.
Also, the transformation in his father, too. Like, the actual excitement that he had, he said, everyone on the road from my village to Dakar knows my son. I cannot wait to bring him back on that road so they can see him and see what happened to him. And this is why I love it. Surgery is more than just cutting and sewing. It is all that, but because we cut and sew, you're able to restore to patients a, a seat at the table of humanity that their tumor took away from them. Yeah, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital.